I always thought about harming myself. I'm shy. I struggled with making friends. I never thought I could do anything. I have extremely low self-esteem. Lately, I've been eating my pain away. Just throw it back up. I've been struggling to move away. Somebody said I don't fit in just because I wear my hair the way I like it. One out of five American girls suffer from mental health problems. Don't be that girl. Talk to someone. Those thoughts I had are long gone, for I have a future I need to get to. In order to get better, I had to do better. I learned how to make friends. I believe in myself. That's when everyone else did, I set an example. Instead of me eating everything, I started watching my calories. The weight is falling off. I went to change my hair, but I decided it was for me. It's for me. A PSA from the Curvy Girl Project. And good morning. Welcome to Expose Under the Sun, sponsored by the Detroit Native Sun newspaper. I'm your host, Darwin Griffin, and we have a very phenomenal half an hour with my special guest, Miss Delisa Beavers, and she's going to talk about an event that's going to come up this weekend, and it's going to be called A Rose is Still a Rose. And before we get started, uh, our show again, Expose Under the Sun. You know that. Sponsored by the Detroit Native Sun newspaper. You probably know that as well. And our call the numbers are area code 313-868-0342, 313-868-0351, Website is www.tv33, whbhbhar.com. You're watching us live from the phenomenal cities of Highland Park, Michigan, under the auspices of the Honorable Mayor Glenda McDonald, as well as the fantastic city, my hometown of Detroit, Michigan, under the auspices of the Honorable Mayor Mike Duggan. And before we get started, I just want to make a few announcements first. Uh, one, I want to um, give a shout out, uh, happy related birthday to uh, my brother from another mother, and that's Mr. Percy Johnson. Uh, and he is one of the deacons over at a church under the auspices of the uh, pastor, Stephen Bland, and that's called Liberty Temple. And also just wanted to, um, you know, to, to give a, a shout out to uh, Andrea Hunter. And Andrea Hunter has been holding down the fort uh, with H -R -R -A -P -R -I. And she's our, uh, I, I affectionately call her uh, Captain Kirk. Uh, she just recently lost her brother. So our condolences and our sympathies are extended to her and to her family, you know, as well. Um, and then also, too, a lot of you may realize today is National Voter Registration Day. So if you need to get some information pertaining to your voting rights, who's on the ballot, and whether or not if you are still registered to vote. Because one thing I just want to remind you too, if you have not voted in two consecutive election cycles, you may be purged from the voting rights or voting ranks. So again, make sure contact your clerk's office to find out whether or not if you are still registered to vote. As everyone knows, this is an important election that's coming up presidential as well as Senate and other races throughout the state. But you don't want to go to your polling precinct and find out that you are not registered. So again, um, make certain that you contact your local clerk's office to get that information and make certain that the information about you is updated. 
Uh, two announcements real quick. Uh, one, uh, Unity Mission Church is having a crusade on October the 5th, uh, 2023, and it's going to start. Uh, doors open at 530, and it starts at 6 o'clock. And they're hosting an Hour of Deliverance crusade at Hope United Methodist Church, and that's at 26275 Northwestern Highway in Southfield, Michigan. And the special guest, I, I told um, Dr. Savina Taylor that I might sing a little bit of the um, song from the um, Jeffersons, which is who one of her special guests is going to be uh, there. And I'll do it. I'll do it next time. I'm gonna have her on the show uh, in a few weeks, so I'll do it then. But um, one of her special guests is Miss Marla Gibbs, and a lot of you know her as Florence from The Jeffersons, and then you also know her from the sitcom with her and Hal Williams called Two Two Seven, which also featured uh, phenomenal actress Regina King. And this is going to be a phenomenal event, so you definitely do not want to miss that. And again, that's going to be October the 5th at the Hope United Methodist Church on Northwestern Highway in Southfield, Michigan. So please do not miss that. And then also, too, my special guest today, her name is Ms. Delisa Beavers, and she is going to talk about a rose is still a rose, debutante ball. And that's going to be this weekend. And I'll let her give all the details so that she can go. And you don't have to see my face, but she can see her beautiful face. And she can talk all about what's going to happen this weekend. Delisa Beavers, welcome to Exposé Under the Sun. Thank you, Mr. Darwin. I appreciate you having me on today. I am excited to speak with you and give you some great information about our upcoming event this Saturday. Well, let's talk about that since you brought that up. Let's talk about Definitely. that. What is the event that's coming up? And tell a little bit about the history of why this event uh, is going on this weekend. Okay. So, first of all, I'm a part of the Full and Fabulous Curvy Girl Project. It is a nonprofit organization that works with plus-size young ladies in the areas of health, beauty, and self-esteem. Um, we are... As of right now, we're in four to five schools in the Detroit public school area, as well as charter schools. Um, so we go in, we service the girls, we give, uh, we have different classes for them. We work with different um, nonprofit organizations, um, such as Empowerment Zone Coalition, um, Insights. There's a few other organizations that we work with as well. Um, we expose them to podcasting. Uh, we do hygiene classes. We do a little bit of everything up under the sun um, for them to expose them because we know that sometimes our young ladies are um, going through, you know, different phases in their lives and their parents are doing the best they can working. So we want to come in and be that wraparound service to assist the parents and um, whatever we can. Um, so this Saturday is our debutante ball. Um, our young ladies have been um, with us year round. So this is like their graduation. Um, they uh, are able to, so Dr. Sharon Dumas, who is our founder and CEO, felt as though having this ball specifically for them would be able to let them see themselves in a different light. Um, and know that all the things that we've instilled in them over the course of that year um, could help them and, and, and they're able to show off and showcase what they've learned. So they'll do a talent portion, they'll do... Um, when you say talent, talent like they'll be singing and reciting poetry and that kind of thing? Yes, we yeah. have we have a plethora of different things going on this plethora. year. That's my favorite word. <laughs> Definitely. We have dancers, we have singers, we have cooking demonstrations, we have a little bit, like I said, everything under the sun. Um, they're also going to be able to do um, a fashion show with their mom 
or their aunt, whoever that, that maternal guardian is in their family, they'll be able to do that as well. And then... When you say fashion show, what type of fashions will it be modeling? Um, anything of their choosing. So this year is our Barbie thing. We, so we jumped... Barbie, like the movie? Yes, like we the, jumped uh, on the bandwagon okay. for sure. <laughs> um, and we... Uh, so with that being said, that we, we kind of want them to do all kind of colors of pink. Um, but it's really, truly up to them. And it's a bonding experience for the mother and the daughter. Um, and we know that, you know, sometimes the mother isn't in the home, the father isn't in the home. So mm -hmm. we su um, supplement that as well. So we have wonderful escorts that are coming um, this year. Um, and then we also have um, on the mother's side as well if we need to. So when, you, you know, when you're saying in terms of say about the um, the bonding, mm -hmm. talk about that. Talk about how important that is, the bond between a daughter and her mother. Whew. Especially, and I say that to you, only because um, we have to congratulate you. You've got three boys, Preston, CJ, and little Hezekiah, but you also just welcomed a few weeks ago Courtney Love. Yes, I did. Um, thank you. She is my my peace and my light. Um, but with that being said, I can't wait for the time that it's it'll be me and her turn. Mm -hmm. You can see the change, and not only the parents. I mean, not only the young ladies, but the parents. They see they may have been in a situation with their their youth where they weren't listening or they were defiant. Um, so with the help of Miss Kim and Dr. Dumas as our leader and, you know, giving us the training um, that we need to be able to be that, that liaison and that bridge, you can see how the young ladies have opened up to be able to talk to their parents, to communicate, not get upset, not, you know, even if, it, if our, my biggest thing when I talk to the young ladies is, look, I understand that you may feel some type of way. Everybody's entitled to their feelings. But that is your parent. The first thing you got to do is respect your parent. We're big on that. So we, um, so what I'll do is I'll tell them, hey, take five minutes, listen to the music that you need to listen to. As long as you are not disrespecting your parents, say, mom, hey, can I take five minutes to calm myself down? And then I really want to talk to you. Um, and then they, they work on that and they work on it together. And then we work with insight and they have a program called um, Strengthening Families. Mm -hmm. So we work with Ms. Verdell with Insight, and they learn techniques and for them to be able to, to have that space, that safe space for that child to be able to open up, but also for the parent to listen and understand. And it may not be, you still gonna be the parent, of course, but you'll be able to understand what they're saying to you and, and kind of piece it together the best way you know how. And, you know, and that's so important, especially when you talk about um, some of these young ladies may not have a father in their life. And sometimes the mom is kind of doing double duty in the sense of um, providing some of the things that um, the father would, you know, do when it comes down to discipline, when it comes down to their education and other things. But you as a mother, as a new mother uh, of a young lady, look at some of the things that you would really want to impress upon her, which I know you do phenomenally with the girls. You know, I've been to different things with you, listen to how you, you know, interact, you know, with them. And what do you think is the one thing now, I mean, this is National Suicide Prevention Month. And I know that's something that's really important in a lot of what Dr. Dumas and you and Kim and Dorothy, you know, and, and Camille, you know, talk to them about making certain that this is not the end of anything. This should be the beginning of everything. Definitely. And especially for those young ladies. Now, what are the age groups that you have for the program? We um, service young ladies from the ages of 12 to 21. Mm -hmm. um, and we do, um, at, like this year, we have 
three sisters. Now, the two older sisters are in the debutante ball. Okay. But they have a younger sister. She's nine. So she's our assistant. And she's our, I, I affectionately call her our debutante in training. But she, <laughs> so she is, she's excited to, to participate next year um, because she'll be able to be grandfathered in. But, yes, 12 to 21. And so then once they, now, talking a little bit about some of the people that may have gone through the program before, uh, some of the persons that are graduates from the program, because my understanding, too, is that you've got one of the young ladies who used to be in the program that is going to be coming back as the keynote speaker. Yes, yes. So our keynote speaker this this year is Ms. Dominique Sparks, right? Uh, that's how you say her last name. and But we call her Juicy. You Juicy. all, yes, you all would know her as Juicy as well, I believe. Um, she is a phenomenal um, comedian. She's really funny. I re and I don't really like comedy like that, but she is, she keeps me engaged. But she is a mother of one of the debutantes from our previous years. Um, and she is coming back to give her take on everything and just motivate the girls to know that hey this is a great program it's not only building you up um to be better in in like your day-to-day -day movements whether it's school because we're big this that's one of the things that we check with our girls is their gpas so but this program just doesn't just stop there we, we build you up, we expose you to different things, we work with you to help better yourself so you can take it on into whatever you need to take it into in, in later in life. And she'll be able to speak on that and how it affected her daughter and helped her daughter for the better. Because I think that the thing is, is that I know Dr. Dumas talks about the four-letter word love. Yes. More than anything else. Yes. And I know she pretty much like encourages the young ladies in her program to not just love one another, but to love themselves. And, and that's a real key component when it comes down to somebody's character is that it's going to be hard to love somebody else if you can't love yourself. Exactly. And that's really something that I think that she in turn, as well as you and others are really trying to expose these young ladies to because the love that you give, can be reciprocated back, and it's like paying it forward. So that's the important part right there, you know, is to love yourself, and then you can get out here and you can love, you know, others. Now, there's going to be a keynote speaker. You've got a fashion show. They're going to also give, like, what, their affirmations, you know, yes, as well? Yes, definitely. So one of the things... Um, I affectionately call her I Mama, Sharon. Mama Sharon. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Dr. We'll say Dr. Dumas. Yes, okay. Dr. Dumas has instilled in us is learning our affirmations. So saying our what first. Is a, what is an affirmation? So affirmation is positive words, positive um, phrases that we say to, to boost our um, morale and how we feel about ourselves, even when we don't necessarily feel it so for example mine would be hi i'm miss delisa i am the delightful educated lovable insightful sexy and amazing delisa i'm so you take your name yes and use that as an acronym to yes. give positive words about you and your character yes and if you see i know you've seen our young ladies when they first start they're like oh i don't i don't know if this is the right word or now they're at the point where oh this is who i am and you are going to love me and appreciate me and accept me because these are the this is what I accept in myself and I love in myself. So, but yes, we definitely do our affirmations, and then we also do a rites of passage where the mothers will come on stage with their daughters and present them with a um, a pearl necklace. And we know that sometimes the youth and my generation included, don't know the significance of having pearls and having that that staple piece in their wardrobe and how classy it is and things like that. So we make sure that the parent, the mothers present that to them. 
Um, and then what? What is now? Now you said the mothers will present yes their daughters with this these pearls yes as the rite of passage yes to let them know that we see you, we understand you, we love you, we are um, we notice that you are maturing mm. and becoming a young lady. You're more responsible. You are. More, you can communicate better. You you have taken it. You're progressing as a young lady, and I want to present this to you to let you know that I see you and I appreciate that in you. Okay, and and not to leave the fathers out. Talk, not at talk, all. Talk a little bit not about, at all. We know the mothers are very very integral in this process. Definitely. But talk about what roles the fathers will play at a rose is still a rose. So we are really big in family, bringing family together. So as much as we can, we we have that opportunity. So when it comes to the fathers or the male figures in the family, because it may be a grandfather, it may be an uncle, a cousin, um, but we do what is called, uh, they first they walk out with their escorts. The the males will be their escorts. Um, and then they they get to show off these beautiful ball gowns that these young ladies have been able to purchase or um, have been donated to us. And when I tell you that they, the way that they see themselves is, is absolutely amazing. But they also do um, a dance with their father. So we play uh, Dance Woman with My Father by Luther Vandross. Um, and they do a, a mini waltz. And it just, and it can be emotional for some girls, but you you see the camaraderie and the sisterhood because they'll go backstage. This is what I see. They'll go backstage and they may see a young lady because, unfortunately, maybe her father is incarcerated or may have passed away, and that moment really hit for her that the girls just huddle around her and love her and, and boost her back up. And then they see, of course, they got to come back out on stage to get their tiaras and crowns and stuff. But you can see the camaraderie; it's absolutely amazing. And then, like I said, the the different spaces for the parents and and the daughters is absolutely amazing. The way that Doctor Dumas set this up is truly unique. Now, I've how long has been? Now I see your. Logo. Yes. It's been 40 years now. 41. 40 plus years. Yes, 41. Full and fabulous yep. has been in effect. Yes. And and what's that say that says what up underneath that? Health, beauty, and self-esteem are our top three core values that we work with. Um, we definitely want, that's like our health aspect. We work with Michigan State University Extension Program. Mm -hmm. And they come out and they teach us about nutrition. And it's been Amazing, because I get to learn, too, and I get to take it home to my kids. Um, yeah, I was going to say that, because it seems like what the daughters learn, they can go back and tell their younger siblings, as well as even their older siblings, you know, as well as their moms or their aunts or grandparents. Definitely. You know, about the same thing. So, like, if, as you were saying, going through, like, healthy living and healthy eating, that they can go back and kind of tell somebody, you shouldn't eat all of those different types of foods, you should eat more healthy, organic, you know, foods. Mm -hmm. And that makes a big difference right there. What What is one of the things, Delisa, that you've learned since you've been involved with the program in terms of, say, about your temple and what you should do different as it pertains to Delisa Beavers? Ooh, I've learned a lot. <laughs> Well, you don't have to go into it because we only got about <laughs> five minutes left. So Definitely. just, just kind of, I know you could probably do another show <laughs> and talk about those things. But what are the, the key things that you've learned? What really stands out, you know, most in your life? So the biggest thing for me is, from the nutrition side, is moderation. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned that, you know, I can still have some of the things that I like. As you all can see, I'm still, you know, got a little meat on my bones. It's okay. <laughs> but um, no, it's about see. I know men to say the, the more the love. So exactly, go ahead. <laughs> it's more about moderation. Knowing that okay, today might be a sweet day, but maybe I just want to put my my grapes in the freezer and chew on it like a piece of candy. Um, once I get out the freezer, um, but as far as like myself, as in 
my job, my my career choice and my um, working with the young ladies is progress. Mm -hmm. You never want to become stagnant. You always want to move forward, um, and and that's like very key for me. I've I've been in other different situations and in, in jobs and where I was stagnant. Here I feel like okay, I'm learning something continuously. So I think that's the biggest thing for me. All these big words you're using, stagnant. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 you know, and, and the thing is is that uh it's important, especially now talk a little bit about the you know, before we wrap up, we've got about a couple minutes left. Um what are some of the things when you talk about the girls and, and, and what they need to learn as they write a passage to go into being a young lady and then, you know, developing into womanhood. Um, when you look at that, you're thinking about what a woman has to do, especially like in raising their children, taking care of their household, being the, 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 the person that pretty much like um, takes a lot of their time that they could be doing something else because they're trying to do for their family, for their young ones. They don't have a moment off. So it's like they may want to take a respite or, you know, I'm giving you a word now, mm -hmm. take a respite and take some time to kind of do that wusa, you know, moment. But there's never a dull moment. And I know, you know, mothers that do it because out of love that they have for their children. And when they, like you, a three-week-old baby, there's not much time for you to get rest because <laughs> your three month old is, I'm sorry, your three week old is really demanding your attention to be fed or, you know, something else. So I, just, I heard you say earlier when you were describing Miss Courtney Love, your newborn, that um, that's your, you know, that's your soul, that's your heart. But talk about the, the mothers that sometimes I hear a lot about mothers need to not be their daughter's friends, but sometimes people can kind of get that misconstrued. I mean, it's important to be able to be your daughter's friend because you should be able to go and have your daughter come and talk to you about things that's going on in her life and in her safe space so that that space will stay safe. But talk in terms say about, you know, the fact that what you see with these girls uh, as to how, if their safe space has been um, congested with a lot of other things that are going on in that safe space, what do they do? I mean, you mentioned, I think, earlier that you kind of take time, you know, so if a girl is going through maybe an anxiety moment or going through, an, you know, a, a mood swing or something like that, what do you do? What would you recommend to them? And then I'm going to let you give the address and the um, information about a rose is still a rose. Okay. So... Of course, we support the parents and, and their decision on how to move. But what mm -hmm. we do is, um, especially for me, is when I talk to the young ladies, um, I give them the mood of advice. Okay, look, first take a breather. Understand the moment that you're in. Um, and understand that your parent loves you unconditionally. But they may not know how to take what you're saying so if you can't speak if you don't want to be yelling at each other or things of that nature write it down um uh, video record it voice record it so you can have that still have that space but if you can't call me call miss kim call dr dumas call your counselor call you whoever you need to to be able to communicate and and when you're in programs especially like ours you have that connection with um with with the adults and the adults have a connect connection with each other so we call the parents we talk to them on a, on a daily basis hey your daughter had a had a light mood swing i don't so know so you kind of let on. them know so you keep the daughter as well as with the parent yes. and then you and other people that work there with you. Definitely. This half hour is going by real, real fast. It has. I'm going to give the information again. This is a rose is still a rose, debutante ball. It's going to be held at 111 Kirby, and that's right there across the street from the DIA. Art Institute. Right, yes. DIA. And that's Dr. Sharon Dumas. That's the founder. And it's going to be at the International Institute of Metropolitan Detroit. 
Tim Smith is always on it. That's our, in terms of say, our all around everything here when it comes down to making certain that we get Exposé Under the Sun on the air. So again, want to thank Tim, want to thank um, Henry Tyler, R.J. Watkins, Michelle Cunningham, everyone that's involved in this station. Again, if you'd like to get a copy of the Detroit Native Sun News, you can contact Ms. Valerie Lockhart, 313-457-5944. Have a great rest of this day. Focus on health, beauty, and self-esteem. We also offer an amazing summer program for young ladies ages 12 to 18. For more information, visit our website at fullandfabulous.org. See you soon.